the termination of District 67 SSA to tax specific developments for uh, the burden their developments would place on the school district. What what happened? What does that mean? What's an SSA? So a little bit of history involving this. And I think this started early 2000s. I know that Jack Preschlack was the mayor when this was actually put in place. So at that time, there was quite a bit of development in the city. Sku probably remembers. And there was a great deal of concern about the school district and the number of children that would be coming into the school district and the financing of that. And so the city looked into passing an ordinance that essentially was designed, I believe, to be a tax on the developers to offset this financial burden that development was going to cause to the school district. So I think that the original theory of it was reasonable and probably fair. Unfortunately, what happened is, as soon as these developments, and there's a couple of examples of it, the easiest one where this came about was Regents Row, which is on Northwestern Avenue, if you're not familiar where this thing is. Once these developments were turned over to the homeowners associations from the developers, the people who had purchased these properties all of a sudden saw that they had this special tax, which it in terms of Regent Row was about $500 extra per unit for the burden that their children would place on the school district. Now, on its face, that doesn't quite sound right because you're a citizen of Lake Forest, you pay taxes, which includes taxes for the school district. And now all of a sudden you've got this extra tax that says your children are going to be a greater burden on the system than someone else's. You start from that premise that this doesn't quite sound right, right? This SSA had been in place for about 10 years. What's SSA I, stand for? Oh, special service area. I'm sorry. Special service area. What yeah. is a special service area? Well, as defined by the statute in Illinois that allows municipalities to do this, it is, if you can identify a special burden that a subset of your community is going to place on the community. An example might be extending sewer service to a community that has all uh, septic tanks. You know, there's a special expense that that community brings or that that neighborhood brings to the community you can create a special service area that uses tax money to pay for these types of projects. Got so it, this it. was used in the context of funding the schools, which was, I don't really think it was designed to do this, but this is how they used it. Early on in my time as an alderman, I was approached by a resident of the third ward in Regent Row who said, he actually contacted the mayor who handed this off to me. He said, you know, I'm really concerned about this. I've been paying this for 10 years. I'm a lawyer. I don't think this is right. I don't think it's fair. And I would like the city council to take this up. So I went and I spoke to this gentleman and he showed me the Illinois statute. He showed me the Lake Forest City Ordinance and explained them to me. To be quite honest, everything he said made a lot of sense to me. So I took this back to the city council and I tried to get this on the agenda to discuss it. And initially, there was a lot of resistance to it because this had been in place for 10 years. People are like, hey, let sleeping dogs lie, all the rest of this. But I felt pretty convinced that this was something that if the council took up and really discussed, that they would come to the conclusion that this actually was not something that was fair. And I think you could make the argument that it also wasn't legal. It took about six months before I could get enough council members and the mayor to agree to actually discuss it in city council. And finally we did so. And once this was really sort of exposed to the open air, there was general agreement that yes, this was not proper. Most of these developments that were subject to this had no children. So they were being taxed as a special burden when actually you know, they were paying taxes for the school district with no children in the schools. So they were really being whacked in this deal. And so the city council, once we debated it, uh, decided to terminate it. And so there were 10 years left. If you add up the savings to those residents, it amounted to somewhere in the range of about $800,000. One of the st state senators was a big fan of it, right? 
Yeah, I mean, after this went down, and you know, part of this was because I I kind of led the discussion because I'd done the research on this. Uh, Susan Garrett, who had been a state senator, contacted me and basically just said, you know, she really appreciated the work I'd done on it and, and thought that I had done a, a remarkable service for my constituents. And, you know, I really appreciated that. I didn't know her. She didn't have any reason to reach out to me other than that she thought what was done was done well. 